During the Cold War, we had a policy of mutually assured yep. destruction. And it was effective. Nobody dropped an A-bomb on anybody else for uh, quite a long time. In the area of cyber security, how would you advise Hillary or anyone else in the White House? What should the policy be? What should the degree of use of cyber warfare be before uh, the United States should retaliate in kind or perhaps better than in kind. Yeah. What's interesting is when you, when you describe the doctrine of mutually assured destruction, what you're describing in essence is the framework that, be, that existed beginning in, about the, in the 19, late 1950s, 1960s, and we then created a series of treaty structures to govern proliferation. Um, What's interesting about the cyber domain is, it, is that it is not as binary. It's not just USA versus USSR, where there can be a bilateral set of negotiations that establishes norms and frameworks. We're in sort of a norm-free zone. We're in a law-free zone. We are in a treaty-free zone. And I think a mistake made by the United States government for the longest time was it assumed that it would have the it would benefit from the kind of asymmetry that the United States had in nuclear weapons in say the late 1940s, right? We thought that we would be the sole cyber power and that we were inherently hostile to any kind of boundary setting because we were so much stronger than everybody else. But what we learned was that the barriers to entry in cyber conflict were are very low. And in fact, even though we might be the strongest in, domain, in this domain, we in many respects have the most to lose. So to your question, step one, I think, is to, is to not rest on our laurels and accept our asymmetry, but recognize that it is actually worth doing deals multilaterally to bring more states into, including ourselves, uh, into an understanding that the cyber domain cannot be a wild west. Um, it cannot, there cannot be kinetic activity that goes unchecked. So right now, as we sit here, there is kinetic activity between the United States and China. Um, and I think, I think that it is, you know, quite consequential. Um, as to when I would ever advise to use a cyber weapon, I would say where doing so uh, will save lives um, in a significant number and where the malware can be contained. So I'll give you an example. One time that this was examined was in advance of the attack uh, in Tripoli um, when, we, when you know, the beginning of the NATO actions to remove Gaddafi. And the question essentially was, if we bomb the air defenses, it'll create a body count of a certain number. Um, can we cyber attack it? Where basically we turn off the air defenses without anything blowing up and without anybody dying. Now, a determination was made that it couldn't be done within the time frame projected. But if I could push a button and keep buildings from blowing up and people from being killed, um, I would do it. But the, here's, the, here's the other aspect of this that I, need, I think needs to be understood. Unlike a bullet that after being shot cannot be reshot, or a grenade, after you pull the pin, throw the grenade and it goes off, you can't reconstitute the grenade and use it again. Malware is different. A cyber weapon is different. So it is alleged, uh, I have to say it is alleged, uh, it is alleged that the cyber weapons developed uh, that were in use uh, against the Iranian nuclear facilities, there is evidence that in the code base of that malware that a subsequent cyber attack emanating from Iran directed against Saudi Aramco, uh, the Saudi, you know, the large oil company, actually had a digital signature that looked a lot like what was alleged to have used against Iran. So theoretically, what this means is Iran, having been a victim of a cyber attack, which alleged, allegedly crippled its capabilities in the nuclear domain, 
having now access to that code base, used it against the Saudis. Again, it's not like a bullet or like a uh, grenade. So for me, what this does is it makes it all the ne more necessary to create structures that contain the use of these weapons. Because maybe the, it, only the world's most sophisticated nation states can develop the weapons. But if they can be repurposed by states or non-state entities with significant lower capabilities, then I think the consequences are, are quite significant.